Welcome back to Joy News Prime. Now, Joy News has obtained a copy of the corruption risk assessment conducted by the Office of the Special Prosecutor on the Ejapa Mineral Royalties Agreement, which President Akufuado has directed to be subjected one more time to parliamentary scrutiny. The Office of the Special Prosecutor in that report concluded there was alleged bid rigging in appointment of transaction advisors for the Ejapa Royalties deal. Among the transaction advisors, which are overseeing the deal is Data Bank, which is partly owned by Finance Minister Ken Oforiata. A corruption risk assessment report conducted by the Office of Special Prosecutor also concluded the transaction advisors engaged other service providers using methods that are opaque and could result in money laundering and corruption. He says nepotism and favoritism could not be ruled out in how the service providers were engaged. My colleague Joseph Pokugako joins me in studio with more on this. Now, Joseph, what is the background to all of this? So on the 14th of August 2020, the Parliament of the Republic passed the Ejapa Royalties Agreement alongside four other associated documents. And government then indicated that the process is to get the said Ejapa special purpose vehicle floated on London Stock Exchange was actually about commenting. Um, sometime around the 10th of September, the special prosecutor decided he would want to go ahead and uh, conduct the said corruption risk assessment. He wrote to Parliament, asking for details, wrote to the Finance Ministry. And eventually, according to what he published earlier today in his statement, uh, a few weeks ago, in fact, just about two weeks ago, he concluded that, and on the 16th of October, he submitted the said corruption risk assessment report to the office of the president. And he's been wondering how come nothing has been done about it today. Okay, so finally, uh, we have a copy of that report. Let's talk about the finding of the special uh, office of the special prosecutor about data bank and bid rigging. What's, what does the report say? And so he makes the point that with the analysis that he's conducted, uh, he's come to a conclusion that uh, the, a firm in South Africa called Imara uh, actually was paid some fees. Now, Imara is one of the lead transaction advisors. Um, Mr. Martin Amidu describes Data Bank of Ghana as a decoy of Imara and makes the point that they are supposed to be paid money which would be in US dollars. He goes on to say the mandate agreement does not say how and when the decoy, which he used to describe Data Bank, was to be paid by Imara for a contract purportedly won and performed jointly. Then he goes on to then use the very strong words that you mentioned earlier. Yeah. The opaque arrangement in this contract um, negotiation process, not arising out of the public procurement authority's approval, is what makes his analysis uh, get to the direction where the said transaction advisors uh, could have, uh, how they were engaged, could have resulted in this process of suspicion when it comes to bid rigging. Uh, no, no bid rigging and corruption activity, including the potential for illicit financial flows and money laundering in the arrangement of how the fees payable to data bank as the decoy uh, was actually being paid, looking at the fact that it wasn't approved by the public procurement authority. And then he goes on to say that uh, looking at the role that data bank is playing and how it's linked with some of the officials, we have a situation where he thinks you can't expect impartiality and neutrality on their part as transaction advisors in advising the Republic of Ghana as uh, an entity going forward and ensure that the rights of the chiefs and people of Ghana are adequately protected in that. All right. Case. Then there's this bit about nepotism and favoritism. What does this say? Uh, and, he, uh, if you could refer to the page where that is. Uh, this is uh, when you look at around page 56 page of 56. the right. uh, document in question. Uh, he goes on to make the case that uh, there were some service providers that actually were contracted by uh, the transaction advisors to help with the various processes as far as the whole running of the contract is concerned. And then he goes on to make the analysis and points to the fact that l looking at how the service pro pro providers were contracted by these transaction advisors, whose involvement he is questioning, their opaqueness and all, uh, he very much suspects that situations of chronism, and he uses that word, nepotism, may have arisen in how these transaction advisors were actually procured to oversee some of these processes. And funny enough, he takes a shot at not just the finance ministry officials, but even in parliament as an institution, that they threw the sovereignty of the nation under the bars by allowing for the establishment of a JAPA in a tax haven, and goes on to question whether they actually were able to do a good job on the document in question, 
uh, before allowing for its approval uh, as far as that particular deal is concerned. So uh, as we see on the screen, this is where he references uh, Data Bank and make the point that there was a zero chance arising out of individual interests at the Ministry of Finance and Imara Stroke Data Bank of expecting impartiality and neutrality on the part of the transaction advisors in advising the Republic of Ghana as a national corporate entity representing the unitary interest of its chiefs and people, he goes on to say. And beneath there, he lists out the expected payments that should have gone to the said transaction advisors. So there is a reference of a $15,000 retainer amount which is supposed to be paid every month uh, quarterly for a period of 12 months and then uh, at the very latter part he references uh, the money that's supposed to go to them an amount of 1.8 percent of the gross proceeds received by the government of ghana payable upon completion of the said contract in question and in in drawing attention to all of this he goes on to make the point that when he does his assessment Imara Corporate, Financial, uh, Corporate Finance Limited of South Africa and Data Bank are being paid in ways that uh, he thinks, uh, even these amounts that are being mentioned, no one would ever know how much they would gain in the end. And then he goes on to talk about the role of Deputy Finance Minister Charles Bohane, uh, accusing him of, and he used a very interesting word there, stonewalling the whole processes, and goes on to say, uh, he appeared to have had a fair sense of some of these concerns, but went on to go ahead and append his signature to the mandate agreement itself and oversee the running of this, all the processes, which he thought was very much worrying. All right, so what is the eventual recommendation of Mr. Martin Amidu? And this is actually in the final paragraph of the uh, report that he issued around page 57, where he makes the point that he, this is... In, in fact, he says this is not a formal investigation. He thinks that this is more of an audit that has been done and that if the president sees corruption as something that needs to attract a, a higher risk, uh, the president should go ahead and con get further investigations done into this for the necessary action to be taken. And additionally, he, he, in, in, in detailing the background as far as this work is concerned, he makes the point that it's more like a, a novel kind of activity that he's undertaking. And in, in giving that background, he goes on to give some quick details on, for example, the investigation being done into the Public Procurement Authority corruption, All right. which he says to a the certain extent, the contract for sale, Saga. which makes the point that is very much stalling to a certain extent because um, the identity of a certain individual has to be revealed, which he's still working on. And not just that, he goes on to talk about um, the Airbus scandal, he gave some background as far as that is concerned and goes on to say uh, government official one is uh, a former president and uh, he's only avoided interrogation because of the upcoming election. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Joseph Upoku Gapo. Now, this report, by the OSP, comes after the minority in parliament demanded the publication of the entire report by the special prosecutor before the president even considers referring the deal back to the House. So Mr. Amidou had stated that he submitted a report to the presidency for action two weeks ago. The presidency responds then asked the finance minister to return the allocation, relationship and investment agreement to the House for reconsideration. Member of Parliament's Finance Committee, John Jenapol, says there is no guarantee the minority will participate in the reconsideration after they walked out of the House the night when the approval was given. We are waiting to receive official communication. Before anything is brought to Parliament, it has to go through the proper procedure and due process. And so as we speak, we are not seized with any document. Uh, there was a one-sided approval in Parliament. And based on our standing orders, it means that there was approval. And so if they are coming back with that same document, then it can only amount to some changes. And we don't know the kind of changes they are talking about. Number two, we haven't even cited the report from the special prosecutor. We want to see that risk assessment, how it was done, what went into it, the underlying assumptions, the conclusions thereof, and why the special prosecutor hasn't published that document. Uh, we still maintain that that deal is a bad deal. We maintain that we ought to pull the brakes, build consensus, and ensure that we do the proper thing. We are just about rising this week 
we don't want to see a similar occurrence of what happened. It's that same procedure that has brought us to this quagma. I think that the president should exercise some amount of restraint and allow us to do what is right and go through the due process. So there's that chance that if it comes back, you, the minority, may possibly work out like it did the first time, depending on why you see in the, the final report that the special prosecutor wrote? The national interest is paramount to the minority. We are not interested in a workout. We are interested in safeguarding the nation's assets. We are interested in doing what is right and proper. Our duty as a minority is to represent the people of Ghana and do what is right and proper. Yeah. And let me assure the people of Ghana that the minority side led by the venerable Honorable Harun Idrisu will do justice to this and we would serve the interests of the country. You're watching Journeys Prime. We're taking a break to bring you business news to stay tuned.